Our next speaker is Samantha Springer. She is in Portland. She relocated there in 2015 to take the position of conservator at the Portland Art Museum. While she remains a generalist due to her responsibility for care of a broad collection, she has particular interest in preventive conservation, sustainability, and working with living artists and Native American tribal representatives. She became a professional associate of AIC in 2013 and co-created and continues to manage the materials testing Audi Test Materials Database on the AIC Wiki. She is a Winter Tour graduate and she held positions at the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, Field Museum, National Museum of the American Indian, and Alaska State Museums. Her talk, Putting the Wiki Platform to Work, Sharing Material Testing Results. Thanks, Susie. And I feel like I have a tough act to follow here. Um, so hopefully this will maintain your interest. Um, so I'll be talking about the I wiki, um, the AIC wiki, but I'll start with a little bit of history about the Audi test. Okay. Oh, the Audi test. Um, Andrew W. Audi first introduced the, an accelerated corrosion test used for evaluating exhibition case materials at the British Museum in 1973. The Audi test, as it is now commonly called, continues to be used by, by conservators as the primary litmus test for materials used in the display and storage of artworks and cultural heritage materials. Several variations and improvements have been published since, including this one, often referred to um, by Thicket and Lee, initially published in 1996 and since revised in 2004. So almost every institution has their preferred method um, based on the resources available to them, whether it is the equipment and materials or the human power. Although conservators continue to use the test and informally share their results, there has been historical resistance to publicizing them. One of the primary issues with publishing results is fear of manufacturer backlash um, or alternatively being held responsible for damage to objects caused through the use of an approved material. I'm sure you can all think of your own reasons. Uh, in addition, variations in Audi testing protocols have thus far prevented the standardization of results. So finally, the accelerated corrosion test is only one of various methods of evaluation and results may be quickly voided by unannounced product manufacturing changes. So as we approach the 45th anniversary of Andrew Audi's initial publication and a generation's worth of trials and experience behind us, it's time for us to address this topic of standardizing the test and sharing the results. So if you're not aware, about 10 years ago, the British Museum started making their own recent results available on their website. And um, this is the, the, web, the, the <laughs> website, thank you, the URL, um, where you can find it and uh, just an image of what their um, kind of database, their Excel spreadsheet looks like of the, um, of the test results. So in the US, the initiative to share materials testing results began at the request of AIC's Research and Technical Studies Specialty Group, or RATS. Um, and in 2011, the J. Paul Getty Museum contributed to the initial content to the newly established materials testing page on the AIC Wiki. So here you can see um, three different pages kind of conglomerated on there. Um, showing what was done in 2011. So this included a general explanation of the Audi testing, a description of the testing protocol, and a list of adhesives and tapes that had been tested by GCI in 2000. So around the same time, uh, the Cleveland Museum of Art's renovation campaign prompted a review of its own Audi testing protocols. And at this time, I was working for the Cleveland Museum of Art um, with Colleen Snyder in the objects lab and we were asked by the design department if we could build an internal reference library just like that. 
of tested materials that had passed. So then they could go through it and pick out whatever fabric that they wanted to use. Um, and then they wouldn't have to bother us. And you know, it wouldn't take four weeks, and then their material fails, and then it takes another four weeks. Um, so they thought that this was a great idea, um, of course. And we were just uh, fully daunted by this, um, by this suggestion. Um, and so daunted by this idea of testing hundreds of materials potentially um, by ourselves, we reviewed the protocols at other institutions and started to try and discover other information that was available on line um, and w on the AIC, w that what was currently available on the AIC wiki and had found the British Museum materials list. And so we thought this was a really great starting point. We could potentially use some of the information that was already available to help guide some of our own decisions and reduce the number of tests that we had to run ourselves. So unfortunately, we, the materials, the information that we had found available um, was pretty limited in the number of uh, materials that were, had been tested. And in the case of the British Museum, they were mostly from international vendors that were not necessarily accessible, readily accessible to us. So in January of 2012, after a timely call for wiki contributors um, by AIC e editor Rachel Perkins Ehrenstein, Colleen and myself, along with our colleague Elizabeth Homberger, now at LACMA, um, we expressed an interest in possibly creating a database of tested materials on the wiki. So if we were going to have to go through this process, we wanted to share it with everybody else. <laughs> so through conversation with other conservators and with feedback from Rachel, we realized that there was a real need for this and a desire from, other con um, from the conservation community for something like this to happen, but no one had yet jumped in and gotten the database up and running. So the scope of this project was to uh, significantly expand the ADI testing page, create a searchable and sortable table of tested materials, um, and in addition, any contributor who shared their protocol should be able to easily add the, their own results to the table, either on their own or passing it along to us. So in the summer of 2012, we created our platform um, based on feedback and that there would be a number of organizations who would be willing to share their data um, only if it had been, would be hosted on a neutral site um, with other institutions and two, that they didn't have to set up a whole new platform on their own. So thus, the materials testing wiki uh, was began, begun and with the hope that other colleagues would feel more comfortable sharing their information on the wiki so that we could provide a kind of safety in numbers. So at this point, I'll just take you on a little tour to show you where the wiki is, how you can get there, and a little bit of the kind of thinking behind how it's organized. So how do you get there? Well, whoopsie, sorry about that. So the red circle, so hopefully you can all find the main page for the AIC, right? Mm -hmm. We're all there, okay. so. Up in the right, you, there's a little link to the wiki. I mean, you can also Google search AIC wiki and it will come up, but just to take you through each step here. So this is, you'll find yourself at the main page for the AIC wiki and um, there's my circle. Um, the materials testing page will take you to this page. Um, so it gives you kind of some bullet points of what are the different materials testings uh, are, this is not comprehensive, it's always a work in progress, um, but if you click on the AIC materials database wiki, that will take you to the main pages that um, Colleen and I have put together. So this is the main page of our ADI testing materials, the results databases. Um, and again, if you just Google search um, ADI test AIC wiki, you'll find this page. Um, let's see, so, and just in case you want them, here are the direct links. And you can come and find me later. I'd be happy to give them to you also, if you can't find them yourself. So the main um, page, 
you can see from the table of contents, there's a disclaimer, a little background on the history of how this page, these pages were pulled together, um, a link to the testing protocols and kind of what we uh, include in the protocols, um, links to the results tables, and then also how you can help. And um, I just say, um, since we've gotten feedback, I've also added like links up at the top, so it's really easy to get to all of the kind of the meatiest part. This is the boring stuff, the fun part is to come. So if you scroll down the page, this is what you'll see. And um, so one of the most important pages is the protocol. So the idea behind sharing your results, it's not just did this material pass or did this material fail, we also want to know how did you get there so that it allows for anyone using those pages and the t seeing the test results to kind of get an idea of, well, you know, what kind of Audi tests were you doing? What, how did you vet the materials before you did the Audi test or di did you do any other pre-testing? Did you wash the fabric? Um, all of those details can be are compiled in the protocols, and so you can, as a user, can access that information and make your own decisions, like, does this compare to the test that I ran, or would I run it differently? Maybe I don't like, you know, using that kind of glassware, and so I don't trust tests that are run with that glassware, so you can just discredit those um, test results. Okay, so this is the, um, protocols page and just to give you a sense of what it looks like. So we have um, all of these different contributors so far and I'd say in the past two years we've had a doubling um, in the number of contributors which is really exciting. Um, I would say there's a very small number of U.S. contributors and we actually have more contributors from outside the U.S. <laughs> I don't know why. We have two from Australia that maybe they're more willing. There's not as a litigious um, kind of environment there, but um, they have been running tests, and there's even a contributor from Singapore. Um, so here's an example of the protocol on the same page um, that the Cleveland Museum of Art carries out. So it's just, it's mostly a bunch of information text. Um, and so I'm taking you back to the main page. Um, so at the top, the meat of why we're all, why we all have this up here is for the results. So these four um, links, we decided to split all of the results up into four different groups. Um, we were afraid that one, having just one table, it would end up being way too much information and and end up being really long to scroll through. So we divided it up into the exhibition fabrics, um, there's one page on case construction and storage materials, another on adhesives and tapes, and another on paints and sealants. So you can sort of um, navigate to the correct page that you want to go to. Also, if you scroll down the page, these are um, additional location where you can reach the links to the um, to the results pages. And so here's an example of what the tables look like. So um, each column that has a little double arrow here is sortable. So if you want to look by the f manufacturer of the fabric or the name of the fabric or by color, you can do that. Um, some uh, information, obviously, like comments, you don't sort by comments. That would be not very useful. Um, so here's the adhesives and tapes and the exhibition paints and sealants pages. And where it's possible, we've uh, recommended that people also upload photos of your results so then users can also look at the images themselves and make assessments as to whether, you know, maybe I see one little spot of corrosion and I don't want to use it, but um, another institution might be more lenient um, and um, another kind of upgrade to your photos is also having the, um, your standards, like every time you run an Audi test, you would have your um, control, thank you, Susie. Um, and so you can compare the control within, um, within the picture here. 
for some institutions that weren't taking pictures, they were taking really detailed notes of kind of um, what their observations were of any corrosion or um, on the, the metal coupons, and so that information is also included in the results image kind of column. So here's a um, kind of zooming in here and showing this is what it would look like when you pull it up. Not today, there's a lot more results on since I made these slides. But say you're looking, it's, um, you want to sort by manufacturer and supplier, you just click on the double arrow and it'll sort it, um, the material name, So now you can see it's sorted by material name. We do have recommendations for how to kind of add the material names in because as you can see at the top here, um, St. Margaret with quotation marks ends up at the beginning of the list. So say you wanna sort it by your date tested. So now you have, um, we re recommend that you put it in by year first so then you can see um, the, so that the date, the tested date comes up by year and then you can say, um, so the British Museum, they retest after every five years so they consider a test any older than five years is outdated um, and so you can see on there when the test was done and if you wanna discredit anything that was done before um, 2012 then that's um, easily done. My animations are very slow. Um, so at the bottom of each page, uh, there is a list of the manufacturers of the materials that are listed in that within the table. And we also have a really comprehensive bibliography. Um, the British Museum just put out a recent article about um, some modifications that they've made to their Audi test in order to help standardize it. And so there's um, been a lot of work being done more recently on trying to um, standardize the protocol and so that we can compare results more easily. And um, I'm also soliciting contributors. So if you see something that you're like, oh wow, that's really interesting, I have this whole um, database or a list of results that I would like to contribute to, please find me afterwards. Um, I'd be happy to help you get it up there. Um, so so have you, as you've seen, hopefully, um, that by establishing some of these best practices for sharing results on the AIC Wiki, um, such as each contributor describing the, their testing protocol and imaging the test coupons, the databases will allow conservators to better evaluate other results for themselves. And by publishing materials testing results on a neutral site like the AIC Wiki, it is our hope that other institutions, including maybe some of you out there, um, will see the benefit of such a resource and feel comfortable participating in greater numbers. And I have to say, since the site has been up, we have not had one complaint or manufacturer say anything about the information that's up there. Um, the Autry Museum is a regular contributor and we have several in international contributors sharing information. Um, and though the database largely contains the results of Audi tests at this point, it's not limited to that test. Um, the National Archives of Australia submitted the results of their photographic activity test, the PAT test, and which brings up an additional benefit of sharing tested materials, especially when involving international con contributors. So finding equivalent exhibition materials that have been tested and approved in other countries. So um, recently on a courier trip, um, a colleague was in Europe and they were unable to find case materials um, that were recommended um, by their institution and they needed to find something that was locally um, available on short notice and they were able to find something on the wiki site. So in the future, I hope to be able to refer to the, um, oh, sorry, okay. Finally, even if you think you're not ready to submit your results, um, your testing results yet, we hope you'll take a look at the site and use it and see how it will only get better with more contributions. So where are we now? Um, in the past two years, as I mentioned before, um, we've made progress towards creating guides for automating the data into code. 
from results saved on spreadsheets and I recently um, filmed a kind of training video. So it shows the process of converting your, if you save all of your results on a Excel spreadsheet, there's really easy ways of automating all that information into Wikicode. So it won't take billions of years of copying and pasting. Um, and for those who are just starting to carry out Audi testing, we have a spreadsheet template formatted to create the, Wiki, the Wikimedia code um, and that has columns that match up with the tables on the Wiki site all ready to go. In addition, Eric Brighting at the Met received an IMLS grant to support the Scientific Research Lab for materials testing and will be testing 300 materials. I think that they are still looking for information from US um, institutions. So if you're interested in helping, just letting them know what materials you want to be tested. You don't have to do any testing yourself. Um, they, would, they are soliciting that information. Um, and the results of those tests will be going onto the wiki. Um, and these will include results from Audi tests as well as GCMS spectra. And um, the Met is currently putting their final touches on refining their protocol. And this, uh, I think it was studies and conservation article that was put out by the British Museum just came out. So some of that information might also be used in refining the, the Met protocol. Um, and in addition, several studies have been carried out at, the, at Wintertour under Joelle Wickens by students, primarily Elena Turok and Sam Owens, comparing different protocols and assessing which produce the most consistent and reproducible results. And all of this work will be culminating in a workshop that maybe hopefully some of you would like to attend um, at next year's AIC. Um, and we'll teach and discuss different variants in the Audi testing protocol and problems that occur and how to assess and document your results. So that's and thank you for your attention. Would the rest of our world be as convivial? <laughs> Are there any questions for Samantha? The, the wiki is also one of the top five of those, <laughs> those resources. So it's, it's a very valuable resource and people use it all over the world. Yeah. So to contribute, do people directly have to contact you or can you take results from things that are published elsewhere by AIC? Um, I have been taking results that are published elsewhere. I'm like kind of slow on that end and only if, um, I've only taken stuff so far that uh, public, the authors have said, hey, m you're feel free to put these on there. Um, so I have done that, but it, it takes, that takes more time, more time for me yeah. to uh, kind of format and organize. So it's a little slower on that end and they're widely available, so. Have you been noticing any um, um, conflicting results when people are using the same protocols? Because something oh, I've been noticing. you know what? Everyone, with, yeah, sorry. With just with um, working with institutions for loans, there's been a lot of kind of conflict and results, but we're using the same protocol. So I'm just wondering oh. if you've been noticing that in the database. Um, I d there hasn't been enough repetition of certain ma of the materials to be able to notice um, conflicts and results. I know um, if any of you were at the materials testing symposium at the Lunder Center a couple of years ago, um, some of this information came up, especially about Sintra. And just as a warning, Sintra is, it's like Kleenex and tissues. Sintra is the brand name and everything that you get is not necessarily made by that one um, manufacturer. So there were what we thought were conflicting results, but it turned out that they were from different um, manufacturers, and so it might not have necessarily been conflicting. I, I've had an interest in the Audi testing for some other things, but you mentioned a, an important point that, you know, manufacturers will make changes 
And so it almost seems that even from, you buy something, you've tested it today, and you go out and buy something tomorrow, if it's from a different batch, isn't that gonna affect it? Yeah, um, so you know, there's a little bit of don't make yourself crazy there. <laughs> there's definitely, you know, you, like every bolt of fabric could have gone through the warehouse differently. Maybe one didn't get covered in plastic and another one did. You could make yourself crazy. Um, so I think that's part of our kind of disclaimer on the AIC wiki, at least, um, and about using the Audi test in general. Um, you're using it as a guide to help. And the British Museum, they, like, they've been doing this for a long time and they have seen that um, sometimes you get questionable results. Maybe you passed or maybe you have eliminated materials that were okay, but the the answers were questionable, and they've n have not observed any bad things happen to art object historic objects that have gone on display with the materials that they have tested and passed. So um, it's not the best, you know. We, uh, we all acknowledge that it's not uh, necessarily the end all be all and it doesn't help us, it doesn't answer all of our questions forever. Um, we have to continue testing. So that's why sometimes you might create like kind of a time frame for your test results. So after five years, the British Museum says, okay, those are no longer significant, we have to retest, but they don't do it between every batch necessarily. Thank you very much, Samantha. So you may have